good morning, Fraser Crone. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit it, but our credentials were pulled at the last minute. The coronation, just at the last minute, they said the MMA Saka podcast isn't going to be allowed in. And I, I'm just, I'm embarrassed for them that they didn't allow us to cover it as media. I mean, you, I can't... I can't argue that we would have put a, a slightly different spin on things, to say the least. You mm-hmm. know, I'm 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 looking at body shape of of King Charles walking down. I'm looking at can he slip can he slip the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury's uh, you know advances, but maybe next time. Who knows? Maybe next time. But we're back post USC 288. What a weekend it was. Henry Cejudo tried, but made us look stupid. Like I I, I just. What is it with Aljamain Sterling? And I need your help on this. I like Aljamain Sterling a lot. I really do like Aljamain Sterling. I've picked him to, but I never pick him to win. What is wrong with me? You know what I mean? I mean, controversially, after watching Fight Week, I changed my pick to Aljamain Sterling. So call me Mystic Mac. But, um, (laughs) you know, we were just talking off air. It's the same you know, Aljamain Sterling and Bilal Muhammad. obviously we'll go on to talk about Bilal in a little bit more detail later on, but they just don't ever look crisp with it. I mean, Bilal's body kick, you know, just touching on that body kick, leg kick, high kick works really well. Aljamain Sterling's got striking to get him in a position that he can wrestle or, or clinch or, you know, land strikes off the, off the clinch, but they just don't look crisp. Whereas you watch, a, you know, Leon Edwards, crisp striker. He Everything is from point A to point B, back to point A. You watch, you know, I mean, a great example is uh, obviously, you know, we'll go on to just touch on one championship a bit later, but Rod Tang. Yep. It's everything with vicious power. It's from A to B, but if he doesn't get back to B, he can go to C. And, you, you know, it was... It, the the rod tank finish spinning elbow okay I, I I've quite literally seen your spinning elbow and I'm just gonna just counter with that with an an, an elbow or or or, or, a, or a hook of my own and, you know I I I can't see Aljamain Sterling landing that not only in training but in a fight ever but with that being said it's clearly an effective style I'm like you I like Aljamain Sterling I don't get why the guy gets all this all this hate in his home state. He still, you know, his opponent still gets, still gets the, the sort of bigger pop, and it's not even like we can say, oh, it's because of the uh, the, the disqualification, the acting, as everyone calls it. He got yeah. need on the head whilst on the floor and was yeah. unable to continue. Yeah, not his fault. No. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be like that, let's 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 bash Petr Jan. Let's no, let's everyone boo Petr Jan because he's the one that cheated in the fight. He's the one that led to the disqualification. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, let me do, can, do you mind if I jump in on that one? Because no, 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 completely, completely. That, that was one of the notes I had of like the weird thing about Aljamain Sterling striking is, like you said, it doesn't appear immediately good, but it's very effective at landing. His timing is actually quite good. I think his problem is twofold, and he even said it on Twitter is that his for the division, his arms are very long, so they look kind of slow. And the second fold is, I actually think he's quite slow for the division, but he has figured out when to land, when to throw, that sort of stuff. He does understand that sort of stuff. I wouldn't use him as a template learning how to strike, like you said, like comparing him to a Rod Tang or a Leon Edwards. But clearly it is working. But yeah, the other side of that, it's so weird that he fights a Russian in Florida and gets booed. He fights in his home, New Jersey, and gets booed. I kind of feel for him at this point. I feel bad for him. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, one one of my... Uh... The notes that I, I took, um, just to sort of touch on as we're talking to Buck, Sterling, yeah. he didn't utilize his reach. You, you watch a John Jones who keep can, can if he wants yeah. to, keep people on the end of that jab all night. We saw it against, um, we've we've seen it against multiple people. We saw him use his length against um, DC in, 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 in the first and the second fight particularly. Yep. Even to a degree, and I, and I know we don't want to always bring it back around, but it's a good example. Conor McGregor using that length against Chad Mendes. You know, he used that teep kick to the body. He used the long looping shots off the off the backhand. Sterling is using that reach to begin with within the first sort of two or three minutes. And Henry was struggling to get on the inside and he couldn't quite get his range and he couldn't find, you know. But then Sterling just seemed to to you know you've got the reach advantage. Don't negate that reach advantage by just swarming in with these big hooks and 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 
you know, yes, he wants to work his wrestling game and test his wrestling against Henry. And I do think that his wrestling surprised Cejudo a lot. It yeah. was probably a lot better than than Cejudo maybe anticipated. But this is wrestling for mixed martial arts. This isn't wrestling for this is an open mat kind of Olympic wrestling. You know, Henry Cejudo, without a doubt, is the best wrestler in the bantamweight division, credentially, in an open mat format. But if you looked at all, Sterling never took Henry Cejudo down in the middle of the octagon. They were mm-hmm. all up against a fence, but Henry didn't have that out. You know, this is why I think someone like a Bo Nickel might be exposed later on in his career. Because, you know, he's beat the guys, you know, Jamie Pickett, I think he's he's matched with... Uh, Trezen Tre- Trezen Gore in 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 a few in a few weeks or or, or you definitely match with him at some point. Mm-hmm. These are the guys that he's probably going to run through because there's it gets to a it gets to a level where you can use that sort of Olympic style wrestling to that sort of college wrestling style. I mean, Daniel yeah. Cormier. That's why Daniel Cormier is so good because he adapted his wrestling yeah. to 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 MMA now. I'm not sure how much Henry's actually adapted his wrestling to MMA because he is getting taken down against the fence. And I know it's it's a rarity that he does get taken down and whatnot, but for someone to land four takedowns on on this Olympic gold medal, he's not just an Olympian. He's not just a good wrestler. He's an Olympic yeah. gold medalist. He was like the youngest. Like there's a really cool story there, exactly. the youngest in history. Exactly. And and I'll throw a couple, because it's an interesting thought piece, but like some of the best wrestlers for MMA were people who, didn't have a ton of success in wrestling because they just took the best pieces like Cain Velasquez wasn't actually that high of a wrestler people like Mark Coleman struggled to qualify for the Olympic team but they took the best notes and then moved that over to MMA but if you're just coming at it from a pure wrestling perspective well it's a different sport altogether but Henry Cejudo weirdly enough like was really purely a wrestler early on in his MMA career and now he's purely a striker like he he went for like four takedowns this entire 25 minute fight and in over his last like five fights, even I would bet you he's went for a total of five takedowns. Like he at this point, he's adapted to striking, which is odd, but his wrestling isn't working as well as as, as maybe he expected. Yeah, for sure. And just to touch on your point, you, GSP, one of the yeah, he's not a wrestler, most dominant sort of you know he had that double jab, double leg or jab double leg kind of style. He he didn't have a a. a strict wrestling background where he's you know he's in olympic trials and he's he's wrestling every weekend yeah and look at how successful he was because he adapted his game to an mma style now with henry yeah i think what lets henry down a lot as well is is his lack of i don't know if it's a lack of awareness or a lack of ability or or what with the jujitsu game because he had you know we saw many times and, and rogan was commenting i'm not sure how relevant it was rogan to be commenting that oh look at he's snapping down on the neck of, of aljo because he's had this neck surgery oh, Aljo's had two fights since said neck surgery and don't get me wrong it's probably still an unpleasant thing to do but i don't know if that was a specific tactic from henry zahudo to snap down on the neck to try and yeah i uh, rogan i think he, i think he, it... he is what he is kind of thing but he, there was chances there where yeah. Maybe could have tried to work a dash, could have tried to work an anaconda, or even a guillotine, jump guillotine, you know, especially at the end of the first round. I think it's the first or the second round. You're on top in, in a dominant position. There's not long left in the round. What's the worst that can happen if you jump guillotine? You can not get it and you can finish the round on bottom. But as long as you sort of defend, Aljo's doing not a lot of damage. He's a, he's a position over submission, a position over damage kind of fighter on the floor. Yeah. So is it a lack of awareness for Henry Zudo to not? Try and you know feed the you know he he, he was snapping down on the neck, which is obviously a, a well known wrestling technique. Mm. But you know at least slide the arm under and and, and come round and, and threaten threaten an anaconda or, or you know maybe work through through under under the armpit to, to to maybe roll for a dash. You might lose the position, but at that time of the round, I don't think that's a that's not going to be a massive factor. And then you can scra- if you do lose a position, you can scramble back to your feet, which is what Eldro managed to do a lot of the time. But it's just, like you say, he's, he's sort of adapted into a striker, and that's maybe through necessity that, especially in the ban- in the bantamweight division, he was massively undersized in this one. Both, you know, he looked maybe quite thick and, and quite sort of muscular, but he's still undersized in comparison to Aljo. I think Aljo is the bigger guy in there without a doubt. And you could kind of see that in a lot of the wrestling exchanges, but Aljo is 
that's natural muscle for Alger. It, it's maybe not so much natural muscle for Henry Cejudo. I think Henry could still make 125 if he wanted to. I don't think he ever does because he's kind of at an age and a uh, place in his career now where the bigger fights aren't at 125. But yep. like you say, he's adapting this this striking game. And let's be honest, he only kind of really adapted the striking game after after beating, uh, sorry, after losing the, the back-to-back fights. Yeah. It's not been a massive stretch of time. And he hasn't been that... I, I don't know if it's a team thing that maybe the team isn't the right team to adapt. Because if you look at Kamara Usman, wrestler, yeah. turned into a, a pretty... I mean, elite striker, really. If you look at the, the knockout of, of Jorge Masvidal, the 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 knockout uh, or finish of Gilbert Burns, the negating of Jorge Masvidal's game using striking to get into the clinch in, in that first fight, he's adapted his game to become a very good striker, but he can still mix in his wrestling. With Henry, it didn't really appear that he was able to adapt as well as maybe a Kamar Usman. Maybe that's just a... a, a you know, a personal thing. Maybe just that's just a, a fighter thing that Henry isn't able to adapt as well as Kamara Usman. But I thought the fight was competitive. This this fight, um, going back to the two eighty eight main event, I thought it was competitive, yeah. and the guys were adapting on the fly in the in the fight itself. You know, Aljo came out with the leg kicks, came out very aggressive. Henry managed to sort of stifle the leg kicks. Then Aljo began to sort of wade in with the strikes, and Henry was more willing to sort of accept the clinch position and look to take Aljo down. It was a lot of, you're doing this, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Oh, okay, you're doing this. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of adaption on the fly. And I thought it was a really entertaining fight. Yeah. I'm not going to, I haven't gone back and watched it. I don't think I will go. I mean, I might go back and watch it. It's not an instant classic. No. But what was your initial judging? Like, uh, or did I you had, see I it? Had, I had Aljo 3 2. Me too. I think. Yeah. I thought that was fine. You know, but. Even if you had Aljo 5-0, like I, I just don't, I can't see three rounds for, for Cejudo personally. No, you know? I think, but then I think if, if Cejudo would have won, I wouldn't be saying, oh, that's a robbery. It's an absolute, oh my no. God, it's the worst ever made. It, it's, you know, it was you instantly kind of forgettable. But, yeah, <laughs> you know, what are fans now going to, fans are now going to jump on Aljo saying, oh, you only beat Henry. He'd been off for three. You know, we, we, we look through his, his game. No one can deny that. Corey Sandhagen win in a minute and 31, mm. in a minute and 28, I'm doing him a disservice, a minute and 28 seconds, finished one of the best, most elite bantamweights we've got, finished yep. him. No one can deny that. Petty Yan, that first fight <laughs> is what it is, you know. But then he beat him in the second fight via split decision. People would probably say, oh, I, I actually scored that for Yan, I scored that for, you know, it is what it is. TJ Dillashaw. Ah, oh, TJ Dillashaw was injured heading into that one. You beat Henry Cejudo by split decision. Oh, he'd been off for three years and you can only beat him by split decision. Yeah. What are they going to say when he beats Sean O'Malley? <laughs> you know, what What can we, you know, yeah. if you're going to use the, oh, he's been off for three years and you're only beat him by split decision. Well, we can turn around and say, well, Henry Cejudo only beat DJ by split decision. So maybe they should be rematching. You know, it, it, you can, you can just... Dis- you can discredit any anybody's win for for certain reasons, but I just let's throw some respect at Aljamain Sterling because he is, I think, statistically the most successful bantamweight as far as um, age and and def- title defenses. You look down his record; it, his last five fights: Corey Sandhagen, Petty Yan twice, T.J. Dillashaw, and Henry Zahuda. Before then, Pedro Muno, perennial contender, sure. Jimmy Rivera, Cody Stamen. I mean, Brett Johns fights this, I think, this weekend. Renan uh, Hen and Burrell. Yeah, you know, that's a great one. Let's put some respect on Aljamain Sterling's name because the guy's twenty three and three. Yeah. Maybe you don't like his personality, but you can't you can't deny his credentials as far as a, a rock solid UFC fighter. That is it's impossible. Yeah. You, you can't. We cannot yeah. do it. His, his game just works. Like there's just something about the game that works. And like, I think he also, a lot of his striking works well. Like we were just talking about, like there's some reason his striking works well. And I think it's a lot of it has to do with that. He's always half wrestling all the time. Like his really, he does a lot of deep head movement. And normally you'd say, don't do that. But because it almost comes in as a faking a takedown, or he might just shoot for a takedown because his head movement is so deep. Uh, it worked, it works really well. And yeah, at this point, it's very hard to deny Maybe he deserves a shot, a spot on the pound for pound. I don't think we, it's not fair to discuss his wins of like, oh, in context, they all suck. 
But all that being said, show the respect to the man. He deserves the respect. Sean O'Malley might knock him out. <laughs> I just I can't stop the cycle of being like, I don't know, maybe Sean beats him. Well, you 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 said I can't remember if you said it on air or if you said it, it when we were just yeah. discussing bef- before we started recording, but yeah. you always pick against Algerine Sterling. Hundred percent. I don't know why. And I, I like him a lot. For some I like reason, him more I think, than most people. Exactly. I think this this fight, the the rumored to be, you know, looking towards Boston. In uh, I think August, I think Anik mentioned it on the on the on the uh, broadcast. It's looking at August. I'll remind you in August to pick Aljamain Sterling. I will. But that deep. With that being said, <laughs> with <energy>. that being said, <laughs> but initially my thoughts on the fight. You know, we won't go into any great detail because there's no guarantees. It's like talking about Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. Yeah. It should happen. Yeah. It might not. Might not. Let's be honest. But. Um, Initial thoughts. It's hard for me to get excited about this fight. It does interest me, but I'm not excited for, because I genuinely believe that whoever wins that fight still isn't the best 130. I I think Mar- Marab, in my opinion, you know, the jacket, Marab, the jacket stealing Devash really <laughs> best, best, best moment of 288 for me, but he that's a, a, a side point. You know, he, he stood there all proud as you are. He looks so this happy. Jacket on, and yeah. he's just like, yeah, robbed your jacket. You're not going to do shit about it, but <laughs> so you know, I, I genuinely think that Marab is the best 135 on the roster. Obviously, Henry called him out for that Boston card. I don't like that fight a lot for Henry Zahudo, I'll be honest. But no, I think yeah, Marab I think plays with Sean O'Malley. You know, I, yeah. Sean O'Malley's got slick footwork, but when you've got someone so did Petty Yan, and look how that fight went. Yeah. Initial thoughts on the fight, like I say. It does interest me because O'Malley does deserve the shot. You know, he we, we always bashed O'Malley of oh, he's, you know, he's never beaten this guy, he's never beaten that guy. You know, he hasn't worked his way up like like many have. Then he went in there against Petr Yan and I think clearly won the fight. Yeah. I know I think I believe it was a split decision, but I think he clearly, in my opinion, I scored it for Sean O'Malley. And he showed improvements. He showed that he can crack. We knew that before. He showed that he can counter wrestle. Mm-hmm. He showed that he can offensively wrestle. Mm-hmm. But how does he handle the pace of Aljamain Sterling, the wrestling, the ground game of Aljamain Sterling, all of which are better than Petty Yan. Um, obviously, that's that's his last fight and his, and his biggest win. And it's five rounds. Remember, he's never even been scheduled for five rounds. You know, the, the logical kind of step up for a lot of guys and girls is, you know, a ranked fight on a, a ranked fight night main event. You know, you look at, we'll go on to talk about the main, uh, the co-main in a second, mm. but Bilal versus Gilbert Burns was a five-round fight. It's not a title fight. Bilal's headline multiple times. Gilbert Burns has headline multiple times. Even the the two girls in the in the fight uh, earlier on, Yang Shanan and Jessica Andrade, both of them have headlined fight nights before. They've gone five yeah. rounds. Even as far down as you know, Marina Rodriguez has gone five rounds in the UFC. Sean Jersey. O'Malley has never even been has never even been scheduled. For five rounds, so <laughs> so how does his his cardio? You know, he he did look tight, he did look tired in that Petty Yan fight. Yes, it was a crazy paced fight, but yeah, if Aljamain Sterling puts it on him, I think Aljamain Sterling could potentially eke out a fairly one sided victory. And what Sean weird... O'Malley will yeah. come out and say, "Ah, oh, he wrestled me. It wasn't a real fight. A proper Conor McGregor type." What a weird thing that the apex disease has ended up rewarding mid-tier fighters with five-round fights so that, like, Sean O'Malley's never fought five rounds. Anthony Smith and Jarzinho Rosenstruck have fought dozens of five-round fights at this point. What an odd... Like you said, and we're scheduled Rodriguez. for another Jarzinho Rosenstruck yeah. five-rounder this weekend, you know. It, what a weird thing that is. That's just a weird byproduct. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense, but I do think that, you know, for me, it, your first five-round fight against a guy who keeps a, a vicious pace in a title fight. It's a risk for Sean O'Malley, but you you know, we know his personality. He he takes that risk and he, he runs with it and he 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 embraces the moment. You know, we there's a reason that he was cage side. Yeah. Now we've seen Brock Lesnar come in there against uh, Daniel Cormier and push him and, and there's a little bit of a something something between those two. But that's a slightly different example, but we, you know, we saw Volkanovski come in there against uh, Makachev. That fight obviously got made. I do think this is the next fight to make, and I do think it will go down in August. Mm. But I also put Henry versus Marab on that fight card 
just on the off chance that he, you know, if Aljo has to pull out for an injury, it's Morab versus um, O'Malley. If mm. if um, Sean O'Malley has to pull out for an injury, I wouldn't be mad at a, a Cejudo versus Aljo rematch. Yeah. It was a close enough fight so that you could. I don't want to see it, but it, a late notice on, on you know, on maybe you know, less this like a Bryce Mitchell situation. It is what it is. You don't lose. You don't want to lose the main event. So. Or, or you know, even if it goes down as a co-main event, like I say, I'm not sure. O'Malley's a star, but how big of a pay-per-view star is he? Or does this play second fiddle to a co-main event to a a different title fight? I'm not quite sure. I think I think there's certain things that Sean O'Malley can do because we've seen Aljamain Sterling's game a lot, and like you said, you were talking about the front snap down a lot of like working the front choke. It's the same reason that he gets kneed in the head all the time. It's because he puts his knees right on the mat, right? And he just puts his knees and he's going for a takedown right from his knees. So those shots are always available. There might be, I don't know. I would have figured Suhudo would be the guy who could exploit that, but Aljamain Sterling's really good. Like I, there's just no other way to explain it. He is such some respect on his name, everyone. More respect on his name, but. The deep head movement, I don't know. There, I think there's there's maybe a case to be made. But let's move forward. We've been hinting at it. Bala Muhammad made us look like an idiot. We made us look stupid. We were like, there's nowhere where Bala Muhammad will find any success at all. And yet here he is, finds success in every area of the fight. I will do a little breakdown of, because uh, I did a write-up for the fight site before this one. And I was saying Bilal Muhammad, jab heavy, likes to control from a jab, likes to control from distance. But if he plants his feet, and throws Gilbert Burns is happy to turn everything into a firefight. So if there's any point that Bilal Muhammad plants his feet and starts trading, he's going to get in trouble. And he never did that. This man can follow a game plan for 25 minutes. He didn't change pace for 25 minutes. He didn't get taken down for 25 minutes. His wrestling in reverse was better. I mean, maybe he fought a man with an injury, but I don't, you can't take the away from him that at this point he has clearly earned a welterweight title shot. He got five and zero oh against a top three ranked opponent. Like what? What more can you say about this guy? Right, Fraser, help me out here. No, I completely agree. And like you say, we've seen Gilbert Burns against Kamzat Chimaev, who, let's be honest, is a middleweight who yeah. who yeah. sometimes makes one seventy, sometimes doesn't. But yeah. we've seen him. He's a middleweight, and we've seen Gilbert Burns just stand in the pocket and just trade and hurt Chimaev. He rocked. He rocked Chimaev. There were points in that fight where I thought. This is it. This is how Jamaev loses. Yes, you know, and and obviously it wasn't to be in in, in that one. But as you said, this let's not forget Bilal Muhammad's record as far as entertaining fights are concerned. This is again, this isn't one that I'm going to go back and watch because it's not an instant classic. It's not. But you know, <laughs> he obviously knocked out Sean Brady last time out, and I rewatched that fight, and he put the pace on Sean Brady, and that was a three rounder, and he put yeah. the pace on Gilbert Burns in this one. It was a five rounder, but you know. He he got a, a a rear naked choke finish in in 2019 and a knockout finish obviously over Sean Brady as we were alluding to just now in 2020. And that's it. He, he's got in his second UFC fight he got a ground and pound finish in in 2016. He's not a striker. He is a wrestler who is happy to eke out. You know, yeah. unanimous decision, unanimous decision, and then the three fights before the Sean Brady, unanimous against Damian Meyer, unanimous against Stephen Thompson, unanimous against Vicente Luque. That was yeah. across five rounds. Obviously, this one's across five rounds as well. Yeah. But he's really good. He is <laughs> really, really good. And, you know, we said last week, don't really see where he's better than Gilbert Burns. But then we also said, we could be sat here next week, so obviously this show, yeah. saying... <laughs> Well, Al Muhammad is actually really good. We need to put more respect on his name, and that is exactly what happened in this fight. You know, I think he That's did what I he needed about. to do. That's and all look... I thought. The fourth and fifth round, I was like, "Man, Fraser said it." Fraser was like, yeah. <laughs> "You know, as as you were saying, you know, yes, Gilbert Burns was injured, but that was that wasn't Bilal's fault. No. That's you know, I'll, I'll I'll go on to talk about that sort of injury and the Jessica Andrade fight in, in a second because I've got Bilal uh, was injured too. Yeah, he, he was exactly he still not working. Foot or yeah, ankle, yeah, and but. That didn't affect his game. You know, he was on the front foot for as long as he, as for as much as he needed to. When Gilbert Burns did blitz, yeah, I'll just I'll just step out, I'll just reset, and I'll come at you with my stance, which is constantly was he orthodox, was he southpaw, was he orthodox, was he southpaw? every time he was southpaw, kick to the body, eating Gilbert Burns' ribs and 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 uh, and liver. You know, his defensive wrestling was quality. That injury potentially came from the defensive wrestling in that in that. First, I think it was the first round or the second round. 
Uh, Gilbert Burns shot for the takedown. I think it was in, the, yeah, it was in the first round. Yeah. Gilbert Burns shot for that takedown. And, but Al Mohammed, despite, you know, he's a big guy, you know, massive back, big legs and everything. He's got, he's got speed. When he, when he wants to not be taken down, he's backing up. His hips are back. He, he's, he's withering out. Yep. And he did really well, really, really well. And the only thing I will say is, you know, I think a fight between him and Colby Covington, because of how good his takedown defense is, I think, you know, takedown 93%. You know, he was taken down once against Damian Meyer, but that was one one of 21 attempts. So he defended 20 takedowns against Damian Meyer. Just looking here, I think he was, he was, he's, I think he's been taken down, you know, two or three times, not a, a lot at all in his UFC career. You know, he's been, ta- yeah. he was taken down once by Jordan Mean, and that was one of six. You know, um, we we go ahead to to look at Takashi Sato. Took him down once. He finished that fight with a rear naked choke, so he's clearly yeah. got the ground game. And like I say, he was taken one, down once by Damian Meyer. Yeah. He defended all of Sean Brady's takedowns, uh, all five of Sean Brady's. He defended four against uh, Gilbert Burns. Similar to to Aljo, he's kind of embracing this heel persona, especially in this fight. And I'm here for it. But put some respect on his name. I really, I, I like Bilal Muhammad as a, as a person, as a fighter. You know, I think he's really funny on, on, on Twitter and, and Instagram yes, and, and on yes. social media. He, he kind of, he gets it. But he seemed to have just, after that, well, maybe training with Khabib ahead of that Sean Brady fight, something just seems to have switched. And now he's, you know, he's kind of realized that I need to kick on with my career. It's all very well beating the 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 means and the Curtis Melenders of this world. No disrespect to those guys, but they're not top fifteen title contender guys. But then you take on an undefeated Sean Brady. And then you take on yeah. not an undefeated Gilbert Burns, but one of the most experienced fighters on the roster who will fight anytime, anywhere, any place. Yeah. And dominated them both. Yeah. A fight between him and Colby Covington, like I say, I think would really interest me. I think if he fights the way he did Against Gil, uh, against Leon Edwards. Let's say Leon Edwards beats Colby in. I think that you know they're sort of trending towards an October date in Abu Dhabi. But yeah, let's let let's say that that Leon beats beats Colby and then and then faces Bilal in what would be a rematch. Obviously, the first one no contest. He was he was dominating uh, Bilal in that first round. Yeah, he was lucky to get poked in the eye, so he didn't get knocked out <laughs> for sure. You know, and you know it was a bad one, and I got no problems with the no contest, but. The way he switches stance against Sean Brady and the way he switches stance against Gilbert Burns. Sean Brady is essentially a wrestler with some heavy hands. Gilbert Burns is a jiu-jitsu guy with some decent wrestling and and reasonable striking. Mm. Mm. The only problem is when you switch stances, you know, you go from from orthodox to southpaw. You there's there's split seconds there where yep. you're you're squared up. A striker with the prowess of Leon Edwards is absolutely punishing you every time you square up, whether it's teep kicks to the body, yep. whether it's you know landing the jab or going heavy on the overhand or the right. The whole reason that you don't, you know, not only are you presenting more of your body to your opponent, you know, you can't slip off as easily. And let's be honest, we know how dangerous Leon Edwards is at reading slips. Ask Kamara yeah. Usman in that first fight when he wakes yeah. up. <laughs> Let's be honest, because, you know, some say he's still asleep from that first fight. Yeah, Leon Edwards is probably, you know, maybe Stephen Thompson, but probably the most elite striker in the welterweight division. Mm. He's you. He is taking advantage of Bilal squaring up to him one hundred percent, which is what we saw in that first fight. So that does interest me. I don't think he can fight like that against Leon. I think he has to go back to his quote unquote boring wrestling. Um, game against Leon but yeah you can see why the UFC is not overly interested in promoting this guy you can see why and I understand it's just you can't doubt at this point that he has earned a shot at the title and like record for record like Colby Covington is every time Colby Covington comes up because the UFC really wants to promote him who is Colby Covington beat we want to talk about Henry Cejudo's or sorry not Henry Aljamain Sterling's record in context but Colby Covington's record in context who the hell has he beat that makes him like oh he gets a title he beat Robbie Lawler in 2019, he beat Tyrone Woodley. 2020, he beat Jorge Masvidal. That's not good. That's not that's an three, impressive record. You know, no disrespect to any of those guys, but 
that three kind of has been they're they're way past their peak. Robbie Lawler's yep. peak was the the Carlos Condit and Rory McDonald fights. Yeah. Tyron Woodley's peak was probably, you know, around the, the Darren Till or the Robbie Lawler fight. He's gone that putting into context, he's gone into influencer boxing to fight Jake Paul. Yeah. And lost. <laughs> and and lost twice. Yeah. <laughs> and Jorge Masvidal. He's a lazy 155, but shouldn't be fighting up at, at 170. Yep. I don't know when his peak was, because if you look at that, you know, he, he beat Darren Till, probably a, a win that hasn't aged too well. He he yeah. dominated Ben Askren yep. in one second or however long it was. Yep. And then he beat Nate Diaz. Probably his peak, though, that was his best moments of it. Yes, he beat Donald Cerrone. That's probably one of the best, better performances of his career. But it it's hard for... You look at sort of... Resume, like we say, Stephen Thompson, Vicente Luque, Damian Meyer, Sean Brady, undefeated. Yeah, uh, Gilbert Burns. Yeah, it's hard to deny Bilal has the much stronger resume. And what's even more important is why does this always happen in the welterweight division, where guys oh. are on long winning streaks and don't get a title shot? Leon Edwards, before his title shot in yeah. Salt Lake City, he couldn't buy himself a title shot. Now Bilal seems to not be able to buy himself a title shot. Let's hope, let's hope and pray that Bilal's next fight is a title shot because there's no one else in the in the welterweight no. division that deserves it. Who's earned it? Like they... it will be Colby, but after that, <laughs> the winner of Colby versus Leon has to fight Bilal, regardless of the outcome. Man, it's this like, you want like sport versus entertainment, and I get that the UFC needs to tread the line to be both at the same time. But I think Colby Covington in a title shot with a win, a one win over Jorge Masvidal is his streak right now. That's too far to the entertainment side and not the sports side. That yeah, is sure. a load of and, garbage. You know, it's it is difficult because Colby's also got quite a boring style where he doesn't finish people. I, yeah, I couldn't yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time Colby Covington finished a fight. Yeah, you know he he, he didn't finish Nate. Uh, he didn't finish um, Jorge Masvidal. Yep. He didn't finish Robbie Lawler. I yeah. think he well technically he finished Tyron Woodley, but that was the rib injury thing. You know, yeah. if if we're gonna go for it, we can't just give it to people on entertainment outside of the octagon. But you know, it is what it is. And <laughs> you, going, going you'd be this, surprised. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. But going back to this fight, Gilbert Burns, I wanna try to quickly yeah. just a couple of seconds on this is mm. yes, he was injured. I probably would have pulled him out of the fight after the third or fourth round because he's not he's not doing anything. But this is the risk that you run when you fight. This is his third third fight this year. And, you know, we're going to talk about the Andrade fight. This is Andrade's third, third fight this year. There's a reason that, that these guys' bodies are, and, go, and girls' bodies are breaking down. Gilbert Burns, he's gone through a fight camp for the January fight yeah. against uh, was it Neil Magny. I, I can't remember Gilbert Burns'. Is, I think it was Neil Magny. Yeah, so Neil Magny in January. Then he goes through a fight camp for, for Jorge Masvidal. And then less than a month later, he goes through, a, a don't get me wrong, a short fight camp, but still a fight camp all the same and a weight cut and whatnot for Bilal Mohamed. There's a reason that people don't fight every single weekend or yeah. every every other month because their bodies break down. You know, they're not as battle ready. I don't want to see Gilbert Burns fight again until December, November, December, because he needs that time to rest. His body needs to recuperate. And same with De Jessica Andrade. I question whether the, the the shot that Yan Xiaonan landed on her to knock her out would have knocked her out if she hadn't have competed since September, for example. Oh, I, you know, know, you look at you look at Aljamain Sterling. He last competed in October, hmm. so he's had the best part of what nine months off. You look at uh, you know Bilal Mohammed also in October. I think that was on the same card. Yan Xiaonan hadn't competed since October. You know, Mosvar Ivalev hadn't competed since June of last year. He's had eleven months off. These guys and these guys, none of these guys suffered injuries in the fight. Well, I mean Bilal, but he, I think he carried that injury into the fight. That wasn't a, a an injury due to sort of being overworked and whatnot. So it's we we love the whole. Oh, he fought this week, then he fights the week after, and then he fights the week after, and it, you know it's fun, it's good. But if you've got title aspirations like these two guys have, you know when when Kevin Holland did it, it was fine because he. Realistically, I think he knew deep down that he's not going to be a title contender. He doesn't have that skill set. Mm. When these two guys do have title aspirations, it it can't, especially like with Gilbert Burns across five rounds. I just personally, I just 
like I say, we love it. People stepping in on a short notice to save a card. People, you know, I think Andrade obviously stepped in against Aaron Blanchfield on short notice and didn't go her way. Yeah. She cut down an extra £10 for this fight. Gilbert Burns and Balaam Mohammed both stepped in on kind of short notice to to save this card because obviously we were supposed to have Oliver and Dariush. But yeah, realistically, is you've got to think a little bit selfishly. Is this the best thing for your career? Yes, the card might not be the best card in the world, but is that your problem? I don't really think that it is. You know, why couldn't Bilal face Gilbert Burns in a in a five round main event? You know, we've got Mackenzie Dern versus Angela Hill now as a five round main event in two weeks' time because <laughs> Ari yeah. Nardana pulled out. Give him two extra weeks at least. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. But it's it's just a point worth touching on that you know both the guys they're very active. I'm here for the activity, but if you've got title aspiration, it's probably not the best thing to uh, to do for your own personal career. No, three fights in one calendar year is considered a, an extremely busy MMA fighter. Three fights in what are we, five months? Three fights in five months? Yeah, of course you guys are injured and losing, but like that's that comes from the other side of the sport of like you, these people need the money. Both of these guys had to accept, both of them, short notice, injured, had to accept a fight because they don't get paid enough money to take a season off and recover their injuries. I just want to throw like, The UFC, I think we talked about how good of a fight season we just had, and it has wrapped up. That is the best that we're going to see for a long time. So the next few events, we have Jarzinho Rosenstruck versus Jailton Almeida. That is followed up with Kai Car France versus Amir Albazi. That's not bad. Which is followed up with Edmund Shabazian versus Anthony Hernandez. I believe, though, that Edmund Shabazian fight is now the one that's headlined by Mackenzie Dern. It was meant to be headlined by... Um, um Irene Aldana. Irene Aldana. Oh no, so so sorry, that's that's oh. the Irene Aldana fight that fell off. Well it didn't fall off, obviously she was yeah. rebooked. Yeah. She was supposed to be fighting Raquel Pennington. Obviously, she's now been rebooked against the champ next month, uh, the end of next month. Yeah. June, June June time for two June. well two two eighty nine, so the next pay per view. Yeah. Next so th- that obviously needed a a a headliner. The headliner is now Mackenzie Dern versus Angela Hill. Right, okay. And then, yeah, the, the big one in there, because those are fight nights. So the big one in there is Amanda Nunes versus Irene Aldana. That's a bad season for the UFC. This is like your quarterly earnings are not looking good because this quarter is not looking good. They've put, in my opinion, a lot of effort and money into, I mean, I'm just I'm just looking through, like, you know, even after that, we've got Vittori versus Cannoneer. Yeah. It's, it's all right. It's the most right. sort of middleweight fight night main event you've ever seen. Then you got Emmett yeah. versus Taporia. That's a good fight. I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, June twenty fourth. I like that. And there's a lot of good, good fights down that guy. You know, Amanda Hebas, Macy Barber, you've got Randy Brown on there. Brendan Allen versus Bruno Silva. Jillian Robertson versus Tabitha Rishi. Yeah, that's fine. And then it's you've got Sean really Strickland fast. versus Magomedov. <laughs> Get out of here! Stop this. <laughs> but you know, I think th- for me, this card doesn't need to happen at all. If we have a two weeks off before international fight with UFC 290, it sure. is what it is. Sure. They're obviously put a lot of money into to 290 because we've got Volkanovski versus Yair Rodriguez. I believe that's the, the, the main event. I imagine that would be the main event with Brandon Moreno and Pantoja as the co main. Got Robert Whitaker sure. versus Drickus Duplessis, Jalen Turner versus Dan Hooker, Robbie yeah. Lawler versus Nico Price. Sean Brady versus Jack Della Maddalena. Yeah. Manal Cape versus Deverson Figueredo that isn't actually going ahead. But we've got no. Manal Cape probably still going to stay on the card or hopefully still going to stay on the card. And this is the card that Bo Nichols fighting Trez and Gore on. But Dude, why, do we, why, why do we need Sean Strickland headlining a fight night card before that? <laughs> uh, and I just, yeah. Like, like you say, this... This 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 card was not a bad card. I wouldn't I wouldn't say this is a bad card as far as as names are concerned. But you know we we got Yang Chao Nan versus Jessica Andrade. That's a really great, really really cool. good fight. Really good great. finish. Yeah. It was such a classic way for Andrade to be finished. You know, looping forward these big hooks, very little technique, and Yang's shot selection. It was all about her eyes. She never took her eyes off Andrade, and she was she watched Andrade wade forward, wade forward, wade forward, bang. Caught, caught the, caught the hook, perfect knockout for for Yang Shao. I thought it was an early stoppage at first, and then I rewatched it, and it was absolutely legitimate. 
it was and so quick, wasn't it? It was. It was just such a class. Like I say, it's just a classic way for Andrade to be knocked out, just swinging forward, hook, hook, big, heavy hook, leaving all this space wide open for a counter. Yeah. You know, no disrespect. Do that against a Carlo Esparza. <laughs> yeah. Because she's probably not going to be able to back up enough in time to 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 land that. Don't do that against Wiley Zhang. Don't do that against Yan Xiaonan. Don't do that against <laughs> Rose Nami Yunus. Don't do that against, you know, someone like a Marina Rodriguez. Because these are girls that are good enough strikers. They go back up, back up, back up, bang, land that one down the pipe. And, and that's exactly what happened. Without a doubt, it's Wiley Zhang versus Yan Xiaonan next. 100%. In China. Oh, yeah. Look, in China. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm going. I, I'm yeah. not. But I want to go. <laughs> but, you know, it... I, I really like that. And, and you know, shout out to Diego Lopez. I thought that was it. You know, he got his show and win mm-hmm. money. Just, and I think he, they got fight of the night as well. So he's yeah. getting weighed in for a pretty solid performance on late notice and short notice. You know, what is it? Five days a week notice. That's good. Con That's Gracie, fun. let's... To, let, let's get the next Gracie in the UFC. Yeah. We always have to have a Gracie in the UFC on the roster. <laughs> I think let's not have Con Gracie in the UFC anymore, but let's find some sort of long lost cousin of a Gracie to to stick in the UFC because yeah. he's not developing. He's not getting that, better. What 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 was he doing for four years? His skills are going backwards. It wasn't striking. It wasn't wrestling. <laughs> no. I don't know what he was doing for four years. I know. You you know he's 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 I don't know he I I thought. Um, Charles Jordan did really well, you know, when he did get, when he did pull guard, Kron, he was, he was tight. He would literally didn't give him anything to, to grab onto, to work, to try and get, but flopping to your back and scooting your ass across the octagon. What, what, what realistically, what did Gracie think with, with that name Gracie? What did he think that Charles Jordan's going to be like, ah, oh, fuck it. Okay. I'll just get in your guard then. Here, here's an arm. Wait, what did, <sighs> But no even progress. then, I'm like, this is, I forget who said it. I think it might have been Dana, who was just like, what did, did he get his game plan from 1996 or something like that? Like, no one does the butt scoot anymore. Because exactly. even if someone dives in your guard, like most people are so skilled now that even guard play top position is is the better place to be. But we were just talking about this the other week. I forget when. But oh, with um Charles Oliveira, I'm just like, even if you're on top in his guard, it's you're still you're still fine. But yeah, it's it was an ugly, ugly thing. Yeah. And it's a shame because we... The, the fight before that, Matt Provola versus Drew Dober. Oh, I'll get these guys fight when Drew Dober's fit enough to fight again. Get these guys fighting again, and then when whoever wins that one, yep. get them fighting again. I just want to see a, a tournament between Matt Provola and Drew Dober across the next ten fights. I just want to see them fight each other yep. every single week because that was fun. It was exactly as advertised in my betting piece. I said not going the distance, no yep. chance. You know, three. I think it was a three fight at uh, three. Knockout streak for Doba, three uh, two knockout streak for Favola, and he called out Paddy the Baddy, and then Paddy right. kind of just just said no because I'm injured on Twitter. Well, yeah, I'd say fuck no. I'd I'd <laughs> I'd injure, I'd throw myself down the stairs as well if I saw Matt Favola call me. I'd be like nah, yeah, uh, ankle broke. How'd you do that? <laughs> just just got my friend to ride a car over my ankle. I'm not if I'm Paddy the Baddy. And the shots that he he's got no defensive awareness. Yeah. I'm not taking on Matt Provola. Absolutely not. <laughs> However, as things stand, that's a fight night main event further down the year. You know, let's be honest, it, it, it is. is a fight night main event. But it's a good one. I love that 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 uh, performance by Matt Provola. But aside from that, I don't think there was anything great on the on the prelims. Disappointed for Marina Rodriguez, but when you can't stop a takedown and you, you can't stop a takedown kind of thing. It's like, that's life. That's life. But let's look at, I, I do want to look ahead a little bit and then we'll come back to this weekend because uh, if like, we're all complaining, like oh, Jersey and Rosenstruck versus Jailton on Maiden main event. It's not good. That's not even an apex one. Bellator bringing it. Bellator 296. Gegard Musasi is going to be fighting Fabian Edwards. Uh, Mansoir Barnui is going to be back fighting Brent Primus, the former champion. Douglas Lima's back. And, I, 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 Bellator is bringing it this weekend more than the UFC is. This is a much better card. Sure. And, you know, it's, I believe it's the, yeah, it's the return to France for Bellator. So they, they're now putting on their second French card. I think the first one was what, Houston versus 
page Something maybe like that. yeah a while like ago that. they might, might have yeah. had one in between oh they had um the heavyweights fight there before but you know as you say this is it's a i don't mind this i think it's just a good card and it's certainly one that <laughs> it is. you know i'll tune in for you've got you know saul rogers on there guy who probably should have won uh the ultimate fighter if he didn't have visa issues gegard musassi now he in his past fight against johnny ablin eblin mm. didn't look like himself but the fight before that against austin van der Ford, yep Pissed him absolutely, just pissed through around the board within, yeah. I think, was it a, a minute or <laughs> yeah, yeah, a minute and 25. He yeah. just, just absolutely, I don't care about your undefeated record, <laughs> bang. And you know, obviously, we can't quite sort of it doesn't quite work like like the way we want it to work. That uh, Austin Vanderford beat beat Fabian Edwards and then got dominated by Gegard Musassi. So, Gegard mm. Musassi should beat Fabian Edwards. Yeah, Fabian Edwards is riding all the the sort of wave of, you know, he's got finished Leoda Machida, went to, went to war and dominated Charlie Ward. He's riding the 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 success and the confidence of of Leon. I think this is a really good really good fight. I, I I'm, I'm it's a potential changing of the guard kind of thing at 185. Mm -hmm. I think if Fabian wins the fight, he he gets the the title shot. Like you say. Brent Primus, mm -hmm. former champion on the card. You've got former champion Douglas Lima on the card. Yep. You've got, you know, guys that have headlined, like Tim Wilde's headline, headlined uh, uh, Bellator card before in, in Birmingham. Brett Johns, is, I don't know if this is the official sort of lineup, but on, on topology, Brett Johns is the third fight on the card. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, you've got Denise Keir, uh, Keirholt. Yeah, she's struggling a bit, but she, she, she's on the card. Oliver Enkamp, who had a really good. Um, he's last was it his last performance? Yeah, last performance. Boogie choke. I mean, his, his last three is he's got a finish, rear naked choke, finish, spinning back fist, finish, a Japanese necktie, finish, boogie choke. Yeah, do, do not miss that guy fighting. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun fights. You know, it's I'm I'm here for that. No, it was no doubt. I mean, the, the Bellators, we got a much better card. All right, let's jump back to this weekend. We got one fight night, 10, their debut event on U.S. soil, one championship. Made a splash, made a very big deal this weekend coming to the U.S., and I think it was, all in all, a very successful weekend. <clears throat> Up and down the card, it was a big, exciting fight. Rod Tang defended, uh, like you were talking about, uh, crisp shiny elbow via knockout mikey musumech he uh won via submission stamp fair body kick knockout which was awesome sebastian Catastam, the former champion upset <laughs> the big roberto soldich uh sage north got fine yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. jackie Bunton did really I, well go ahead just quickly just touching back on sage yeah. am i right in thinking that he got dropped with a jab because from what i saw i don't know if it was he was I, <laughs> the finish you know it only lasted what 20 30 seconds but i'm pretty sure he got dropped with a jab and then managed to find the the, the heel of, of his opponent and i, I don't it. think his opponent really had the the oh yeah you were total you were completely right because he gets hit in the head and he crumbles and kind of crumbles <laughs> down does, yeah. he, he, he doesn't shoot for a takedown <laughs> or sort of welcome him into the guard he kind of just just goes directly Sage yeah, North, you know, and then it's just it's the most Sage Northcote thing. It's just a, yeah, I crumbled from a job. I'm just gonna just heel hook you. All right, when you're that kind of athlete <laughs> and you're that kind of talent, it's just like, fuck it, do whatever you want, man. Like, sure. but heel hook. I think you know the the highlight for me was Stamp Fairtex, and I want to see Stamp dance it, in the UFC because I really cool. think that she could be a, a, a problem. She, I don't yeah. think we'll ever see it, or we won't see it for. A long long time you know i'm talking three four years yeah but she's what she's she's, she's like younger than me she's, she's 24 24 25 yeah 25. so young <laughs> but yeah she's <laughs> that'll be bothered like, i was I hoping she'd be like 29 we'd get at the end of her career but <laughs> we won't see some if at all you know we don't have a lot of thai fighters in the ufc because one championship is the place for thai fighters clearly yeah. you know it's evident and understandable. Yeah. I think we've got what Loma look for me. And that's who, it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Off the top of my head, yeah, that is that's it. She's awesome. Like, love love Loma Lock Boomy. She's great. But she's so small that she's a 105er. 
and we just don't have that division. You know, it's it's a shame. But you know, going back to Stan Vertex, I think she stole the show with the walkout and the the walkout was great. But then if she puts on a boring boring performance, it's like oh, okay, you know, yeah. yeah, great. The walkout was great, and we love body kicks at MMA Soccer Podcast. We love a body kick. We really do. We love a leg kick. We love a body kick. We love a head kick. Yeah. Phenomenal finish. And, you know, I think, I think it's like you say, I want, I, I want to see her in the UFC. I don't think we'll yeah. see her in the UFC. If, we, if at all, it'll be four or five years, like a, a kind of Ben Askren that really makes his name for, in, in one championship and, and yeah. Bellator and then comes over maybe too late. I think, Past you know, the prime, we'll we'll, yes. we'll be talking that uh, you know if she would have come over in in you know in in twenty twenty three, her versus a, a Wiley Zhang would be a fight that I want. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, she would have come over in her prime, but yeah, that well, was a great fight and a good win. Elise Anderson is a dangerous grappling focused fighter. She looked good coming in. She was experienced in uh, Invicta before this. I mean, Stamp did the reversals. She scrambled well. Like in the areas where we think she's weak, she showed strength there and then got a body kick knockout. Like you said, yeah, that was the highlight of the show. Yeah. And I think, you know, Johnson Mariah. It was okay. Of, yeah. It was, yeah. It was yeah. again, another one like the UFC 288 main event and co main event. I'm going to go back and watch it. Yeah. I've watched the highlights. I haven't even watched the full fight, but mm. I'm kind of glad for DJ that he's he's had this sort of mini rivalry with Marais because that's kind of yes. what he needed, I think, to really get over with the one championship fans because he comes over, I think he, did he pick up two wins or three wins? So he lost to Henry Cejudo, he picked up yeah. three wins, then he lost to Morales. Then he had, yeah. obviously, the 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 Rod Tang fight, which kind of yeah. really pushed him into the, the spotlight again. But he yeah. needed this mini kind of rivalry, this mini sort of series between the three of them to really, I think you know one championship fans would maybe like okay this is the ufc guy this is the guy that's you know whatever his record was at the time 20 23 and one yeah you know this, yeah. Is, this is the guy he's, he's coming over here to try and challenge our guy and i think he really needed this fight to get over with the fans to sort of prove that you know i'm adapting to your rule set it is a different rule set i look at the first the first fight you know he sort of suffered at the hands of the rule set almost Yes, and, but he's adapted. You know, he had the, the fun fight with Rod Tang. It kind of showed. You know, I can hang with Rod Tang on the feet, and then when it goes to the ground, it's my game. And I, I think it was a really good kind of sort of statement career win for for Demetrius. I think he'll look back on his career as maybe, you know, really respecting Adriano uh, Marias for giving him the opportunity to headline the the the, the US event for a start. But also to kind of kick his career, maybe not kick it on because it it wasn't stalling, but really kick him on with the fans and with the 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 one championship ultras, as it were. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that well, I I think that really helped legitimize everything because if you just walk through Adriana Marais the first time they met, we would be questioning it, one championship's entire roster. But instead, he got knocked out. So we're going, yeah. oh, this is legit. This whole roster is super good and legit. And I think that really helped legitimize the whole thing. Uh, but it really worked well. Like, this is what we like. Rivalries in sports really does sell. Uh, this rivalry is has been awesome. Uh, this was this fight was the most one-sided one. The other ones were more back and forth. Uh, but yeah, one championship did a great job this weekend. Now, Demetrius Johnson said he's going to summon George St. Pierre and Habib Nurmagomedov to discuss retirement. What a council. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not a bad group. And, you know, I... I'll say it now. I would go out for a pint with the three of them. I did. I, I don't. I don't know if. Well, I mean, Khabib wouldn't drink. I, I imagine George St. Pierre will get up early for training, but yeah. D, DJ might share a beer with me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he's the only one. <laughs> you know. But does he retire? If he steps away from the sport now, I'm not mad about it. If he has no. another fight, I'm not mad about it. No, that's fine. I'm just not mad about it. It's the same. You know. It's the same with with Henry Cejudo. If he steps away from the sport, I'm not I'm not mad about him stepping away from the sport. It is what it is, you know. He he's he's a Hall of Famer without a doubt. Yeah. But do do I need to see him? I don't want to see him at featherweight because Max Holloway no. is the logical fight for him, and Max Holloway jabs his head off, uses his superior physical size. You know, he's and, he's small and... for bantamweight. He's not kind of a featherweight. He's tiny for sure. And you know, like I say, if he steps away, he steps away. He wants. He said he wants Marab in Boston. I think if he loses against Marab, he steps away. 
I'm, I'm not mad Hashtag. about. I'm not mad about. Uh, do, he looked good in his return. Yeah. The same with with DJ. He looked good, but how yeah. much more has he got to prove? How many more fights does he need to? You know, it, it, it it's got to be a strain on DJ like, traveling over. Constantly traveling over to Asia to fight, to travel back, to travel over, to travel back. And, yeah. you know, it was different when he was in the UFC because he's sort of, you know, in the US every 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 weekend kind of thing. He but, lives there and stuff like that. Exactly. Like, he just he wants to hang out with his family and play video games. Like, you know, and he's very honest and upfront about this stuff. I'm just like, fighting is kind of my day job. It's not what I yeah. like to do. Exactly. And, you know, Whereas you've got people on this this card this weekend, this UFC on ABC for Rosenstruck versus Almeida. Yeah, I'm looking up and down the card. I didn't this is on ABC. This is on, this ABC. Is on ABC. This sucks. Charlesinho <laughs> Rosenstruck is going to get dominated on ABC. Almeida this is terrible. I think, gets a first round finish. I, I the, the the card itself has got names on it. Anthony Smith and Johnny Walker. Sure, sure. Jessica Rose Clark's fighting. I love Jessica Rose Clark. I love the way she fights. She's just oh, yeah. not the greatest. She hasn't got the greatest ground game in the world. One of our favorite fighters that we said need, is in desperate need of a victory last time out didn't get it. Mandy Baum. She she <laughs> fights again, but she fights against. Oh god, this is on it. ABC guys. Ji on Kim. Yeah, it's not won a fight since 2019. Has had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cancelled fights. <laughs> Lost her last four. Yeah. Why look, is she still in the UFC? She what might beat Mandy Baum at this point, just to make just, us look bad. Exactly. She, she, like you said, she, she might beat Mandy Baum. We've got Carlos Allberg, hopefully, um, sort of avenging the recent loss and retirement loss of Mauricio Shogun Hua against mm. Pateria. I'm sorry if I butchered that. It's not a bad fight. Douglas Silver and DeAndrade against uh, Cody Stamens, competitive one at 135, but they're fringe top top 10, top 15 guys. You know, we've got a heavyweight fight, Chase Sherman fights again. Pff, don't give a shit. <laughs> Matt Brown versus Court McGee. We've got a Legends League fight here. I'm here for it. Do that. And you kind of got a Legends League fight in Tim Means versus Alex, Alex Morono. Keep, keep them coming. Keep them coming. These are the type of fights that we need to see each other, each guy. You know, we had... Uh, yeah. And on ABC. That's great. Yeah, exactly. You got the sort of OGs of the game. Daniel Rodriguez versus Ian Ian Gary. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. That's a good not one. Bad fight, no, you know, that's I, not a bad fight. That Ian Gary should might... be the main event, actually. I would prefer yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Anthony Smith versus Johnny Walker. I I, I think this has been scheduled 47 <laughs> times before. I mean... Johnny Walker's getting knocked out. <laughs> I kind of hope so, because I like Anthony Smith. I, I like his podcast. I think he's very smart as, a, as an analyst as well. Yeah, he is. The main event. The thing is, I really like Jason Almeida. I think he is the future of the heavyweight division. You know, four... I think he's had four UFC fights now. So he won on the contender series in the second round. He won his first, second... Yeah, th- four UFC fights, all finishes. Yeah. Two in the first round, two in the second round. I like him, and I like Josinho Rosenstrike, but Rosenstrike, I just can't. I just don't. I just, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, but if you, know, if you he, wanted, like, okay, so main event ABC, I want Jason Almeida to get a big knockout win. Josinho Rosenstrike is one of those guys who will who will just evade for five rounds and make it a terrible, boring fight because that's usually what he does. Um, he's he's consistently he's got the skills to do that. That's the thing. He's, he's, yes, you know, he's a. Big guy, but yep. if you look at um Rosenstruck, he, he went he was what nine and oh when he knocked out Alistair Overeem in the last dying seconds to cut his face open that time. Then he yep. lost to Nganu in 20 seconds. Yep. Then he beat JDS and then he lost to Cyril Gan by decision. Then he knocked yep. out Augusto Sakai. Then he lost to Curtis <laughs> Blades by decision. Then he lost to Volkov um yep. by finish, which I I'll be honest, I don't even remember that fight. And it was oh, a it was a a main event. I have no recollection of that finish. I'll go back and watch it later today. I I literally have. No, I did not know that. I knew the fight happened. Did not see him getting knocked out in the first round. Yeah. And then he came back, and beat Chris Dalkus in in twenty three seconds. Yep. Yeah. He's cl- he's maybe the hardest hitter at heavyweight at the moment. Maybe Pavlovich. Maybe mm-hmm. Rosenstruck. But I just think Jason Almeida is very smart. You know, although he's only four fights into his UFC career. He's had 20, yeah. 20 fights, you know. Yeah. And he's, you know, multiple grappling fights. 
um, you know, and I just think he's really good. I just, I, I want to see the size of him when he steps in there against Biggie Boy because you know last yeah. way in two thirty two. I think he could maybe make two oh five. I don't want I to see he, him fall yeah. his way down to two. I'm pretty sure yeah he's had a light heavyweight fight in yes. the UFC before. No, I think he has had a light heavyweight fight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah I think so he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his debut was at light heavyweight. Then he went up to face Parker, Parker Porter. Mm. And then there was a catch catch weight fight at 220. And then he, his last fight was at heavyweight and he weighed in at 232. Yeah. He'll probably come in around, what, 230, 2, 2, 220, 230, 225 maybe. It's a good range. Him, That's fine. Realistically, I want to see him down at light heavyweight because... When he gets to the upper echelons of the division, he's gonna be too small length and and physically. But yeah, on paper, like you say, this it's an ABC card and it sucks. <laughs> but when you dial down, you know, for for me and you who you know will watch the 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 local guys fight in a car park as long as they've got MMA gloves on. Hundred percent. This is not a bad card, you know. Like I say, Jessica Rose Clark, one of my favorite fighters. Just I, I like everything that she sort of stands for. Gabe Green, Brian Battle, yeah. Brian Battle, I think, stepping in on short notice. Mandy Baum, hoping that she gets a win. And there's entertaining fights up and down the card, but let's Man. be honest. I, yeah. I'm skipping to the end of Chase Sherman versus Carl Williams because I do not give a shit. Brian Battle always throws me off because he's he his birth name is a great fighter name, and then his nickname is a stupid fighter name. Yeah, like it, the butcher. It, it's like he's just, uh, just uh, <laughs> well on the so, so on UFC stats it says his name is Pooh Bear. <laughs> so, oh really? What is oh this? yeah. So I don't on know if that's official. he's the butcher. And oh no, I do seem to think I do seem to remember the sort of Pooh Bear thing. Exactly, exactly. Is, if you haven't got it? if you haven't got a established nickname, yeah. Don't use one. I agree with you. I 100% agree one. with you. Yeah, I, 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 I did find agree. it interesting this week, just, just as, a, as a last point, that Henry yeah. Cejudo went from Henry the Messenger Cejudo, and now Terrible. he's just embracing Triple C. That works because it's a clear change from the Messenger to Triple C. Yeah. Pooh Bear, the Butcher, who the fuck knows? I, I'm pretty surprised. Yeah, I... I... I think the messenger was a weird one because I remember doing an MMA quiz and it said, who is the messenger? And I was like, I have no clue. Exactly. <laughs> if, it's not, if it's not notoriously kind of your nickname, don't yeah. use it. No, don't use Pitbull. Don't use, there's so many nicknames that so many people use. And just like, I almost think fight, fighters don't give yourself a nickname. You want a, a nickname from your you coach. Want, or yeah. Fans. Someone to, to get, I mean, look at the, I mean, Anthony Lionheart Smith, pretty good. Johnny pretty Walker good. doesn't have a nickname. I'd do Johnny the Madman Walker. That Why fits. the fuck not? It's, it's like with, with Darren Till, the gorilla, given to him by Dan Hardy on comms once, and he's right. just stuck with it, and I'm here for it, and it works. Yeah. Uh, Skill-wise, maybe it doesn't add up, but, you know, it is what it is. Court McGee, the crusher, awful. Man, that is dumb. It should be, like, interesting guy, interesting past. <laughs> Matt Brown. Matt, the immortal Brown. Because he yeah. died from a heroin overdose and came back to life. <laughs> Jessica, Jesse Jess, Rose Clark. Jessica love Rose, it. Jesse, Jess Clark. Mm. I love it. I we're love that one. We're struggling. We're struggling. It's Mandy. We're struggling. Monster Mandy. Bone. No. Chase the Vanilla Gorilla Sherman. No, okay. And that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, has got to be the end of the podcast. We cannot... Actually, wait. I've got to find something. Cody the Spartan statement. I can't end the podcast on the Vanilla Gorilla. For goodness yeah, sake. But... I don't know. Well, actually, I quite like Jarzinho, Biggie Boy, Rose and Stroke. I do like I'm, Biggie I'm, Boy. Ju I'm just a big boy. I'm just yeah. a big, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to put my fist in your face. I'm going to knock you out. I'm here for it. Biggie Close Boy I... versus Jay and Almeida. I'm yeah. here for it. Oh, I, yeah. And I do like Biggie Boy. If it was Big Boy, I think it's kind of funny. But yeah, Biggie yeah, Boy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. From, yeah. Yeah, I'm th is he from... So, uh, Sorry, no, no. Yeah, I... Yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm all, right, all for it. Let's get out of here. What do you got going on in terms of writing? What do you got publishing this week? Uh, I'll be I'll be all over some news pieces this week. Hopefully, there'll be some uh, news. And I'm I'm looking ahead. I'm I'm beginning to plan for UFC 289 because on the site we're really ramping up our sort of especially pay per view sort of content. So we're going to sure. be looking to get pieces out on every single piece. I wrote a piece on uh, uh, Jasmine Jazz du Jazzu Duvicius. Nailed it. Yeah, I wrote a, a piece on, on her. Although I did see that Macy Barber was booked for another fight. 
which is concerning for me. I thought she was supposed to be fight. Oh no, sorry, my mistake. She's fighting Miranda Maverick. So you know, I've wrote a piece on that, and uh, it's a you know, great fight. That's such a good fight too. I really like that. Exactly. We'll be looking ahead to UFC 289 as and when, because as we kind of alluded to, it's 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 thin on the ground to say the least. <laughs> it's not good. Anyway, Fraser, thanks so much for your time. That's the MMA Sucker Podcast. Thank you, folks. Cheers.